Hey, welcome back to Last Night I Watch. I'm Christian, here with Carlos, Mark, and Ian. And today we are going to talk about the brand new film that just came out, The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent, starring Nicolas Cage and Pedro Pascal. Okay, you just run out there, you get the truck, you come back and get me, I will keep a lookout. Uh -huh. Love it. Love the plan. But maybe you should go, and I'll stay here. I love that plan. I do. But you are a faster runner than me. I saw how fast you were in National Treasure. No, that'd be the stunt department. Not according to the making of feature right. Fine. Oh, oh, wait! So you're going to go? I'm going with you. So in this movie, Nicolas Cage is playing himself, and he gets paid like a million bucks or so to go to this island and uh, eventually he meets up with Pedro Pascal's character. Um, it's Javier, right? Yeah. Javi. Javi. I am Javi. Javier. I am Javi. Um, and he wants Nick Cage to play a character in his script. And, um, yeah, they're, uh, they're quite the duo together. I really enjoyed both of them on screen. More so Pedro Pascal than Nick Cage for me, because, I don't know, I just... I kind of have a special spot for Pedro Pascal, especially lately. But uh, yeah, what'd you guys think, Ian? Yeah, I, I, it was fun. I think that's what I told you after we saw it in the theater. It was just a really fun movie. I didn't. I don't think every aspect of it worked, such as the CIA operatives. I honestly think you could take them out of the movie, and it could still just kind of you could still work up to everything that happens in the climax. Uh, and same kind of with his family. I don't really know if you needed the family aspect either. Uh, honestly, once Pedro Pascal got in the movie, that's when I was like, all right, here we go. This is, um, I'm, I'm a little more invested now. Everything with them on screen was really fucking funny and just a blast to watch. Uh, they just, their chemistry was just really good. And f they're just funny. They just were. They just worked each off each other so well. I just thought they they clicked great. Uh, yeah, overall, like it was just fun. It was just a fun, wacky movie. You know, I have you know some some uh, takeaways here and there, but overall, I thought it was fun. Um, Mark, what about you? Same thing. Okay. To totally, total ditto with what you said. Um, <clears throat> he and uh, Pascal, they just they were wonderful together. Um, I. I think I would live with Pedro. I mean, you know, I'll rent a room from me or wherever, because he would just be so much fun to be around. And I know it's just, you know, and I'm, and I'm watching him. It's like, you know, Nick, you know, when are you going to realize just how genuine, how nice this guy is, you know? And he just, you know, he just, he, he if nothing else, he just wants you to be his famous friend, you know? And there's no way, from, from the beginning of the movie, there's no way that I believed that he had anything to do with uh, with bad stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I was almost, like, worrying. I'm like, I really hope he's not going to be the bad guy. I like him so much, you know? And I'm glad that didn't... Yeah, I feel the same way. He's just such a likable guy. I mean, there was this teeny tiny little voice in the back of my head that, you know, maybe he would just switch gears on a dime and all of a sudden he's this asshole. But, I don't know, there was this... Too much of that 99% that he was a cool guy that I couldn't go there. Yeah, I'm glad they didn't do that. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Carlos? Man, you know what? I, I couldn't wait to get out of this movie. I didn't oh, really? enjoy it. Oh, wow. Okay. I don't know if it's the headspace I'm in lately or what, okay. but I was not having fun. Yeah. Now, we get the intro where he's talking to his therapist and she's trying to pull that out of him. Um, do you think it's because you lost your talent? And he almost gave a pretty honest response that you would expect Nicolas Cage in real life to give. The fans, you know, they, speaking of fans, yeah. the fans, they, they're always telling me I need to be in less films and have people miss me more and everything, uh, but I'm trying to make a, make a buck for my family, you know, this is a job to me, and I was like, oh, that actually sounds like Nicolas Cage. Right. Um, but the rest of the movie, it's very fictionalized, he's doing acid and hanging out with Pedro Pascal and they're just acting goofy and he's making out with himself in the bar. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't know if that's yeah. that's more of a fictionalized uh, Nicolas Cage. And then I get home and I look up a little background on this film and I find an interview where he specifically says that he's like, yeah, I wanted this to be more of an honest um, performance by me and hmm. more of m me as a human being. But the director kept saying, no, I want you to push it into a more fictional Okay. kind of thing for this film so that's exactly what happened and i think that's kind of what let me down uh, another gripe that i had was i watched the trailer uh, in the theaters 
and it gave away the best punchlines, it did. the best it, jokes. It did. It yeah, that's what pissed me off too. The the one where they're climbing over the wall. Yeah, that was a big mistake to 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 blow that in the trailer. That was like one of the best gags, and it, they actually it, it, put a really good performance into that. Yeah, I know that. I completely agree with that because that is a funny part of the movie, but it is kind of just like we already know what happened. We already know that he's gonna walk around. Yeah, that would have been so funnier to have seen that in the movie. Yeah, yeah, that's why trailers can be a real bitch. So there's well, times where I kind of avoid trailers because they spoil shit like that. Yeah, that's one of my policies now is avoid trailers. But yeah. Yeah, I gotta stop showing up early for the theaters now, I guess. Because, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I gave away way too much. Yeah. Um, and if a trailer is too entertaining, then that means usually you've seen the, know, the, the best of the movie. Yeah, yeah, very true. But I also gotta agree with what Ian was saying and Mark. Uh, Pedro Pascal killed it in this movie. Um, I think I liked him better than Nicolas Cage in this film. Uh, the family, yeah, you know, same. yeah, yeah. The the family, they were okay. Um, his daughter seemed a little too old to be sixteen. Seriously, yeah. yeah. So it's kind of creepy. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was a little weird. Yeah, it was, maybe not creepy, but it was a little weird. No, I get what you're saying. Yeah, um, a lot of Nicolas Cage references, of course, in a movie about Nicolas Cage. We even fit in one of my favorite, uh, not the bees, right at the right, very end. Right, right, yeah. Um, that's one of my favorite is Wicker Man. The Wicker Man. Wicker Man, yeah. Uh, but yeah, you know, overall, it was just okay for me. You know, I'm probably not going to jump back into the theater like I did for uh, everything, everywhere, all at once. Because that one, that one hit. It's hard to yeah. find a movie that good. And maybe that's another thing about seeing this one right after that is yeah, it does not hit as hard. Right. I can agree with that. Yeah. I was sitting there in my seat and I was like, the only thing unbearable is this movie. Oh, no, really? this isn't that. <laughs> <laughs> but, um... <laughs> yeah, I was kind of getting mad. Oh, well. What, what'd you think, Christian? Um, yeah, I, I definitely preferred Pedro Pascal over Nicolas Cage. But I will say, if you are one of those big Nicolas Cage fans then you will for sure love this movie. Um, not that I don't like Nicolas Cage. He's fine. You know, there's a good handful of movies that I like of him. Um, I like when he goes crazier, because I grew up watching National Treasure 1 and 2. That was, like, one of my first exposures to Nick Cage. Same. And he's very, Same. like, serious yeah. in those. He's, yes. Like, uh, I don't know. I, I prefer him more in a crazier role like this, and that's what we got, pretty much. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I just... I. I thought that it was one of the better Nick Cage films of recent times because for a while he was doing all these different kinds of movies that were like not good at right. all like yeah uh the Ghost Rider movies I didn't care for those that's yeah. true um there's a few other ones that I saw that I, I can't remember the names of but I just I was like eh whatever Season of the Witch yeah yes we never oh I never even saw that did you actually ever go see that I, I didn't know but it. we always used oh. to make fun of so much. Mark, you, you said like you liked it? Yeah. Oh. I've watched it a couple of times. You like Season of the Witch? Uh -huh. Oh, that was such a meme with Chris and I. That was our, our punching bag for a long time. Season of the Witch. <laughs> no. We had never and, seen uh, it. And we've never even seen it. <laughs> <laughs> Drive Angry is another. I remember, really I think um, our buddy Jason and I pretended to go see that. We told my mom we were going to go see it, and they think we just went and uh, um, engaged in other shenanigans <laughs> while the movie was actually playing. <clears throat> I, I would. That one's good. Yeah, okay. I would suggest seriously watching. Amber Heard's in it. So speaking yeah. of, yeah, what a topical woman she is right now. Now, see, I've grown up. I've watched <clears throat> Nicolas Cage when he was more serious this whole time. So when he starts getting manic, it makes me uncomfortable. Because it's like, dude, you can do so much better than this. Why are you acting like Jim Carrey? Yeah. Stop doing that. Yeah. You know, leaving Las Vegas. I mean, it's a masterpiece. I've you never know? seen the whole thing. He, do, he He's a little bit manic in there because he's losing his mind. Right. You know, so, I don't know. I'm, I'm sorry, Christian. We we took the floor from you. No, nah, yeah, that's my fault. Sorry. You're good. Um, see, Christian, I might be the opposite of you i might be kind of leaning towards mark i don't know you might you can correct me if you want but like i i do i think i kind of like him as like in the national treasure movies i think he might be a little better when he's more subdued there's a movie that i really like called he's the star of it it's called eight millimeter and have you seen that mm -hmm. i Good like movie. that movie a lot and he's like a private investigator i think he's a dick from what i <laughs> the, the nickname for private investigators yes. 
Um, and he's pretty straight laced in that. And I think he does a really good job in it. He kind of gets a little wacky at the end, but overall he's, he's, he's pretty, uh, by the numbers in that one. And cause when I think of him being crazy, like, you know, like when he's talking to his flashback self and he's all screaming, I don't know. That that's it. Just gets a little. It does kind of get a little much for me. I by the way, I did not like the deep fake at all. No, I don't know what you guys thought of that. Yeah, did you guys it didn't like? Look too great. I didn't think it looked that good. I don't know what you guys thought. I don't know. Some about crazy Nicolas Cage has always been enticing to me. Well, a lot of people, a lot of people oh, like really like crazy sure. Nicolas Cage. But um, what what do you guys think of the deep fake? I mean, they pulled it off. Him as a younger oh. self, the effect on his face. Yeah. You thought it worked? Yeah. Okay. I think you did good. Yeah. It was okay for what it was. Um, my, my, yeah, my girlfriend I pointed out that she better. saw some of the lips were missing in certain parts. Like, it wasn't rendered all the way or something, but, you know, it didn't bug me too much. What did, you, did she like it? Yeah, she liked it. Okay. Yeah. I think he could have maybe even taken that out, too, him talking to himself. Yeah, I, that's I, not the most... I don't know. I wasn't laughing very hard at those scenes. Me neither. I th- really, like... I think I told you, Christian, like, the movie worked... When it was just Nicolas Cage and Pedro Pascal, that's when this movie really thrived. And not yeah, gonna, that's, uh, that's the best part of it. Also, just Pedro Pascal. He, he was... I told you this. Like, he, to me, was the best part of the movie. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Yeah. He was just so funny. We just you know he just he just wanted to hang out with Nicolas Cage and and, and uh, do LSD with him and just you know just kind of have a fun time. It was just so funny. It's almost like um, he wanted to do these things, but I don't know if he didn't have somebody to do with it or didn't have the guts to do it himself or whatever the case may be. So here comes his idol and kind of a crazy guy and yeah, oh, let's try this, let's try that. Yeah, you know, I am glad it, because they did stick the. Uh, um, the uh, CIA stuff in there. I'm glad that it was comically done. You know him trying to to you know do the mission and that kind of stuff. I mean they did get that right. Christian I mean, wiping his head. I was just gonna say <laughs> Christian. Christian, you like that a lot, right? When he wiped his head. Yeah. Um, specifically when uh, he completely passes out and they're like Nick, Nick, wake up, wake up, and then they just resort to saying action, and then he wakes up and he <laughs> stabs himself with the antidote. That was pretty good. That was pretty funny, actually. That all, that's all he responds to is action. It's what gets him going. Other than that, like, I really didn't care about the whole CIA angle thing. They, it bored me. Yeah. Tiffany yeah. Haddish, I think, is a very good actress. But, man, how freaking boring. The other guy, um, he's another comedian that's usually in these films. I recognize him from Neighbors, the Seth Rogen movie. <laughs> yeah. He's like Seth Rogen's buddy in that, from what I recall. Ike Barinholtz. Okay. Yeah. Looks like he could be a Wahlberg brother. Oh, yeah. Uh, that, that might just be me, but anyway. I don't know. They just didn't fit for some reason. I agree. I, I don't know what it was. I agree. And the building that they were in when they were talking to him on the computer, it was completely empty and all the shelves were empty, and I don't know. I don't know if this film was shot during COVID times either. I think it was. Because you don't see a lot of people in the same frames. Yeah, I think I think it might have been. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this yeah. CIA was just so weak for me. Yeah, I agree. You know what might have helped the CIA... See, they were, um, Tiffany Haddish was kind of, I don't know, I, I saw her as kind of lightweight, and then the other guy was just comic relief. You know, if maybe one of them, if Tiffany Haddish's character would have been more hard-ass, you know, and, and expecting him to do this kind of stuff, you know, and him screwing, you know, because I, mean, I think she maybe she was trying to do that, but it was just too lightweight for, for those scenes or her character, whatever the case may be. Definitely, yeah. Yeah. It felt like they were trying to make her, I don't know, like some kind of, like, comedic amanda waller <laughs> kind of like if amanda waller from suicide squad was like oh okay. supposed to be a funny character i had to think about who amanda waller was for a second i was like i know who that is i just can't think of who they are yeah yeah the the main lady right yeah charge. right that's a good comparison oh it kind of came off to me i was like eh, what are you doing yeah i was glad that they got killed off too yeah i same. was like oh thank god i don't yeah. gotta watch that anymore. it's like okay good <laughs> more, more more time for pedro and nicholas cage yeah. yeah. What do you guys think about the family? Did you like the family aspect? No? I didn't give a shit. Yeah. What about you, Mark? No. I, okay. I care less. All right. And they didn't even act like exes, you know? Yeah. I don't know. And compared to everything everywhere all at once, like the family <laughs> values we're getting out of that? Yeah. <laughs> this, like, was nothing compared yeah. to that. Yeah. Uh, that's, a, again, a very, yeah, good uh, reference. And the poor comparison. little girl that was kidnapped at the beginning of the movie... I don't hear anything about her until his daughter gets kidnapped. Right. And all of a sudden, okay, oh, now I know. Now I remember there are two of them. I, 
I think the CIA do bring it up, and that's they're trying to have Nicolas Cage find her. Right. But yeah. it, you know, it's just. You're right. I think there there's a better way to, if they wanted to. I almost wonder, like, it makes me almost question, it's like, would this movie have worked if it was just Nicolas Cage and Pedro Pascal just being total goofballs with no conflict? But maybe it wouldn't have. Maybe it would have made the movie worse. Because I think you need to have some sort of conflict, maybe. Yeah. You know? Story, yeah. Just maybe have a better conflict. Yeah. Not just this kind of ham-fisted CIA angle. Well, but I'm also wondering, this whole movie, um, Pedro's all like, so now we get to figure out Act 2. Oh man, now we have to find out Act 3 and how this whole thing is going to end. And it's interesting how they're pointing out how this is a structured film. Uh, it's very almost meta in a way. Yeah. But I wonder if that's why it was bad on purpose. Like, the CIA was pretty, like, cliche for, a f- for like, an action film. Maybe. A uh, cliche comedy aspect to it. And at the very end, uh, once he does drive up into the embassy uh his family hugs him demi moore right <laughs> i know how again how how appropriate but but then yeah. that's when we realized that it was all just a big movie that they're watching that him and pedro pascal developed and christian you said that reminded you of tropic thunder yeah i got some tropic thunder vibes with the whole movie about making a movie aspect yeah that that makes sense. Give me gold member vibes. Remember, like in Gold Member, Tom Cruise is playing Austin Powers and uh, Kevin Spacey's Doctor Evil and John Travolta's mm. Gold Member. At like the very kind of... beginning. Yeah, and then and then also at the end when like they're watching it in the theater and everything, just like on this, they're watching it at the theater <laughs> and everything. I got right. some Gold Member vibes. <clears throat> I think they do that at Tropic Thunder too. They watch the movie in the theater at the end. Also, it's kind of a trope, but yeah, you know, it's I don't know. It just it kind of seemed like they just kind of had to put in the family thing just for the sake of uh, emotional response in the audience. I don't know. I just again, I I I probably sound like a broken record, but this the only reason why this movie worked for me is because of Nicolas Cage and Pedro Pascal just being silly dudes. Which speaking of silly dudes, that acid trip scene had me in stitches yeah i love that it was so i've never done acid but i've done my fair share of other drugs and when they're sitting down and he's like those guys over there are laughing at us and he's like <laughs> oh my god they are and they're you know that's such a like 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 chris you know like we've kind of been in those situations where we're just sitting down and we see other people it's like they're looking at us and <laughs> they're not of course you're just you're just dumb just you know under the influence of god knows what <laughs> it was pretty accurate. I thought that was a pretty good, um, you know, uh, representation of what it's like to be on drugs a lot of the time. It's paranoid about stupid shit. I was cracking yeah, up. Yeah, I mean, especially being out in public like that on yeah. LSD can be a complete mindfuck. Yeah, I could imagine. <laughs> and it was cool, too, that they didn't show stuff from their perspective, you know, because a lot of times they do that. And right. Up looking. No, we got their reactions. That's a good point. I yeah, like I like that too. That's a good point. There weren't any like floating uh, bears in the sky. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like psychedelic, uh, you know, wonky imagery. Yeah. I was waiting for that to happen, but it I'm was so of... much better to watch Pedro Pascal act. Yes, like, yeah, I agree. Yeah, I didn't even think of that, Mark. That's a good point. And then it gets pretty scary when they start driving on like the coastal <laughs> area and they start looking at each other and Pedro <laughs> Pascal has those big eyes, those big acid eyes. That was one of the fun- yeah, yeah. Hilarious. That got me cracking up. Was- and you know why I was laughing at those ones? It wasn't in the trailer. There it you go. It wasn't there to be spoiled in <laughs> the trailer. There you go. Because that, again, that wall gag is so funny, but it's just like, the only reason why I laughed, like, probably maybe, like, out loud is because just he, he just, you know, his little peer over is just so fucking funny. Yeah. But I'm like, but I already know that he's going to do that. It's just seeing him do it. I, I'm going to laugh every time I see it. Yeah. I just, but I know it's going to happen. It's just, it's, yeah, it was disappointing that they were, they blew that in the theater or in the trailer. Not the audience was saving it. The audience was roaring in the theater at that part. Ours was we were too. Cracking up. Ours was yeah. too. There were a lot, a lot of, of barking. Yeah, definitely. Some there were sometimes like only like a couple people laughing, but they were consistently laughing at like every single thing. That's a good point. <laughs> yeah, they were just those kind of people, just like, laughers. The laughers. I like oh, the. Good old fun. I like the part where Pedro took him to his uh, his like shrine of Nicolas Cage, his <laughs> whole collection. Yeah, it was nice to see the Mandy chainsaw in there. That's yeah. that's another good Nicolas Cage one. I tried watching that with my ex girlfriend, and we fell asleep unfortunately. So one of these days, I need to go back and watch it. <clears throat> I will say this movie made me realize how much of Nicolas Cage's 
um, films that I haven't seen, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like Guarding. T- I think I had the VHS to Guarding Tests. I've never never watched it, but that was. I kind of liked that. That was just such a. I was like, even though I've never seen it, I'm like, well, that's a funny little uh, name drop. And uh, have you seen Con Air? Mm-hmm. Have you seen Con Air? Christian, Couple times. Christian, have you seen Con Air? Yeah, a long time ago. That's one of my favorites of his. And again, it's because he's not really that crazy in that. Mm-mm. And yeah. that's what I think I kind of like about it. The Rock. The, the Rock Rock's is a good. good one, too. Yeah, yeah, that's one of his better ones, for sure. He gets kind of crazy in that one a little bit at times. I think somebody made a comment. Don't you miss being in those big movies like the ba- that? The, I think the main bad guy says that at the pool. Yeah, yeah, The Rock's a good movie. I mean, the cat can act. There's yeah. no doubt about it. Yeah. He's got the right role. Yep. Yeah, when he's screaming, Nick, fucking king. I mean, I don't, but, but that's when I'm like, all right, man. That's too much. That's for me. Yeah. yeah for me. me I'm, I'm in the minority because a bunch of people get off on that. I, I had fun with it. What about when he do. started making out with himself? I didn't. It's just like, all right. Yeah, I kind of. Didn't do much for me. I kind of went, whoa, that's yeah. what kind of movie we're doing, okay. I think his shirt said Wild at Heart, and that's a David Lynch movie he was in with Laura Dern, and I like that movie. He's fucking nuts in that movie, but that one I like just because it's David Lynch, and I like David Lynch a lot. Uh, but I think that's what it said, and that's cool if that's what his shirt indeed said. It's definitely a heart. I, c- almost, I couldn't make it out, but it almost looked like it said Wild at Heart, which is a cool little reference if that is the case. I like the part where he puts on the prosthetic makeup. Towards that reminded me of uh, the new Borat movie. Oh yeah, because he he does that a lot of this. I didn't. I don't think I told you that, Christian. But that that kind of gave me uh, Borat two vibes. Yeah, or like um, when he's doing certain characters on that one show, um, Who Is America, where right. he's like random politicians. Yes. And, like, makes them look really silly. Yeah, yeah. You know, we're missing a big movie, Face Off. Right. That's why I, I brought like, up the makeup. Yeah. Yeah. Killer there we go. Movie. Yeah. I mean, that really shows there how well both of them can act. Yeah, that's a good movie. It is a good movie. I, I just saw it for the first time like a year ago. Yeah, that was at Michael's house, right? Or his apartment? Yeah. Yeah, that was a fun night. What movie are the Golden Guns from? Face Off. Oh, that's yeah. Awesome. Okay. I like that. That reminded me of, Did you guys remember Planet Hollywood? Yeah. That, that him in there reminded me of Planet Hollywood. Like, that would have been, like, something that would have been displayed at Planet Hollywood. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, although I will say, I am convinced... We gotta cover Paddington too soon. We forgot about that. Paddington, Paddington too. Right. Paddington too. Paddington too. One of my favorite movies. I cry every time. <laughs> and then there was yeah, that was a good gag. I, I wanna um, I wanna say I really like the Cabinet of Doctor Caligari, and I don't like how everyone's like except for Nicolas Cage is <laughs> dissing it throughout the whole movie. I I don't even know anything about it. I had never heard of it either till. Yeah, most movie. people haven't, but it's a good. It's my favorite silent film. Great movie. I like it better. I think I bring it up in our Nosferatu. Re- right, you did. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It kind of made me uh, cry a little inside that everyone didn't want to watch it. Just like Or didn't case. care about it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I can relate to them. I'm like, yes, it's a great movie. At least Pedro Pascal liked it. That was his second favorite movie. What was this? His first, first is Face Off, second is The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari, third is Paddington 2. I think that's... I think he got him switched. Because they went three, two, one, didn't they? Because he goes. Oh, so his favorite's what? Paddington too? Yeah, because he's like, what no, could you possibly no, like better than I think it's the other way around, Mark. He's like, quit stalling. What is your third favorite movie? And he right, says Paddington. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> oh, and did you see that he is? He's gradually. Lo- he's going to stop using Nicolas Cage, and he's going back to Coppola. Um, oh. This movie here, um, in the credits, he is Nick Cage, and then the parentheses after that is um, Nicholas Kim Coppola. I didn't even notice that. Wow. Yeah. So they said, hmm. they, I guess all of the famous people, actors and actresses and such that are related to Francis Ford are going back to their Coppola roots. I thought they all, well, who else changed their name aside from Nicolas Cage? Yeah, because I know he, I don't even know any other Coppolas. I know Talia Shire and Jason Schwartzman, but they're not technically Coppolas yeah, that, it, through that, through marriage and whatnot, but... That one director, she's <laughs> already a Coppola. Oh, right, yeah, Sofia Cop- Sophia Coppola? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Coppola, Coppola. I'm yeah, sure Cop- 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 yeah. yeah, me either. Maybe they're keeping their names and they're still going back to their Coppola maybe, roots. Maybe so. Yeah, there you go. Everybody's coming home to Papa. Hey, it's so weird that he's related to them. He does not look like he's related to them at all. <laughs> Christian, you want to rate this first? Sure. Okay. Uh, I'll give this a four. I thought it was an all-around good old fun time. Nice. Um, yeah, Pedro Pascal was great. Nicolas Cage, he's not as good, but I still enjoyed him in this. Um, yeah, if you like Nicolas Cage, yeah, 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 definitely yeah, yeah, yeah. go check this movie out. Or Pedro Pascal. 
yeah. of course. But yeah, what about you, Ian? Um, you know, I think I'm going to give it a three and a half out of five. I can't give it, based, just on principle alone, I, I can't give it a failing grade because it, I, I did laugh um, and I was entertained a decent amount of the movie. So, And I think I'm going to give it, so I give it a three based on that alone. And I think I'm going to give it the point five just because just Nicolas Cage and Pedro Pascal are just so fucking funny together. Like that was just, it was very entertaining to watch. But, you know, I'm, I'm leaving it at that. I still had some issues with it. But overall, you know, like, I, 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 like I've said, it, it was just fun. I had a fun time. And that's all I wanted. But yeah, um... <clears throat> yeah, Carlos, what are you, you going to give this? I got to give it a... Let me go a 2.5 out of 5, guys. Okay. Yeah, not my favorite film. I, I did laugh at certain parts, but man, those spoilers uh, from the trailers really ruined it for me. I like Pedro Pascal. He was amazing in this one. Unfortunately, everything else just didn't work for me. I was expecting a lot more from Tiffany Haddish because I actually like Tiffany and the other CIA agent, but that whole storyline was just boring to me. Yeah. And the whole movie, the whole time I was just sitting there, I was like, man, I should have watched Northman instead. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey. Yeah, so... Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday. I'm going to go check yeah, it out. Nice yeah, nice money. So 2.5 for me, guys. Nice. What about you, Mark? 3.75. Okay. Three and a quarter... Uh, three and three quarters? Three and three quarters, yep. Um, loved everything that uh, Pedro and Nick did. Um, yeah. I I don't know that the CIA stuff they could have I don't know they could have either done it better or we could have eliminated them have bad guys come from other places uh, the family stuff you gotta have family in there especially if she was gonna be kidnapped you know I don't know I mean all that kind of stuff I just kind of push aside because Pedro and Nick just kind of overshadowed that I mean I really really enjoyed their chemistry so yeah Three and three quarters. I'm, I'm going to ask Christian this since you thankfully didn't see the tr- uh, the previews. Christian, um, do you agree with Carlos that like that really kind of was a bummer to put that joke in the in the trailer? Like, did that take anything away from you? Yeah, it was one of the funniest things in the movie, and it was like, oh, okay. Yeah, I, I know what's happening. <laughs> see, what I'm yeah. trying to what I try to do with that is I'm trying to be like, well, that was the marketing's fault. I don't want to take that away from the movie itself. You know, it de- right. but it's just tough because it's like I did it, still laugh. Yeah, the but, theater, it, but but at the same time, it's just like we know yeah. what's gonna happen, and that's not the movie's fault. It is the marketing, but at the same time, we still are kind of bummed. It just kind of sucks. Yeah. Anyway, you could have laughed more. Yeah. 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 It, yeah. Yeah. Goddamn. Pre- that was one of the things that got me interested in wanting to fuckers. see it. I was like, oh yeah. Yeah. Same. Kind of I think um, it was before Jackass that they were showing the trailer for it, and I was like, that actually looks pretty funny. Yeah. But yeah, big mistake on the blowing that in the trailer. Have you seen the trailer for Men? Time. Yeah. I mean, the things like ten oh, minutes right. long. Yeah. 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 I know. Seriously. Yeah. They they gotta stop with that. It's dangerous. I'm sorry, Christian. I cut you off, bud. You know, I was I was jokingly said, ne- better luck next time. Yeah, there the you whole, go. The whole marketing thing. For the sequel. Yeah. Well, that does it for the unbearable weight of massive talent. Um, thanks for listening, everybody. Thanks for being here, guys. That yeah. was nice. Thank you as always. Yeah. And uh, yeah. and shouts out to Nicholas Cage. We love you. Yeah. We hope that you're back. Love you too. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for listening, everybody. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks. Deuces. Where do you where do you go when you go to the movies? I don't know. You don't know. <laughs> you get chloroformed and you get dragged there. <laughs> um, no, I, I still don't know around here that well. I, know? I still use a map to get here. <laughs>